All right, now it's time for the final. I feel so robotic. It's time for our final speaker of the day. Do you know where your water comes from? My husband and I were excited. We were talking about this on the way here and really excited to find out more about this. Diane Stoltz is here from the Ramona Municipal Water District to fill us in on where our water comes from. So she'll be over behind you. She's been over at this table all day selling some small tools that you can use to better monitor your water on your own property. And now she's gonna teach us a little bit. So you can turn around and look at the stage behind you under the white awning. Take it away, Diane. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Um, I'm Diane Stoll. I'm the Cross Connection Program Specialist for the Ramona and Municipal Water District. I am also the conservation advocate and I also do recycled water. So um, I have many hats. So as a conservation advocate, it's my job to educate um, and manage programs that help you um, change your water use habits for good. My goal is to help you make changes that are easy and will last a lifetime. So a little bit about our water is the earth is made up as 97% ocean water. And then 3% of that is fresh water. And out of that fresh water, it's unattainable because it's usually frozen or it's um, underground. And so we have to con learn how to use our water that we do have from our um, local sources, which are from the rain that we get through the um, hydrological cycle, or we get runoff down into our reservoirs, lakes, and streams. And then we also have to capture that into and make sure that we can um, uh, use that for potable water. So, with that, water is also the world's universal uh, solvent. It is the only substance that comes in different uh, sources. So it can be a liquid, as you know, you drink it. It can also um, come in a solid, as ice cubes, and a vapor, so like steam. So when you heat up your water, we have steam so that it's the only substance out there that can do that. And your body is made up about 60% water and it is used to regulate your temperature, hydrate your skin, uh, lubricate your joints, control your blood pressure, it flushes your body waste, and it um, delivers oxygen. A person can only live about three to five days without water. So water is extremely important and it's essential to life. So Ramona is approximately 45,800 acres, which is 75 square miles and um, has approximate population of 40,000 people and it's growing. So um, the Ramona Water District provides services to approximately 7,000 urban parcels and 3,000 rural parcels. So it's quite a bit. Um, we provide water, sewer, uh, recycled water, pro fire protection, emergency medical services, and your park services. So where does our water, drinking water come from? Since we no longer have a water treatment plant, Ramona Municipal Water District buys its water from the San Diego County Water Authority, who buys their water from the Metropolitan Water um, District. This is up in LA. And then the County um, Water Authority was created in 1944 uh, to administer the Colorado rights and import our water. They sell water to 24 water agencies throughout this region. They have 310 miles of pipeline and provide 75% of the water used across our region. The San Diego has few natural water assets to support our economy and our quality of life. We receive very little rainfall. We only get about 10 inches per year. So it's not very much, and especially in these dry years, we really have to um, see how to get more water.
Mono's water travels through hundreds of miles of aqueducts and it comes from Northern California and the Colorado River. It makes it. And we're at the end of these very long pipelines. So it comes all the way down here and then that's it. <laughs> Ramona's water um, is currently 11% of the water comes from the state water project, which is up north. And then um, it starts more than 700 miles north of Lake Orville, which is close to the border. Oregon border and then we get snow melt from the Sierra Nevada and it's stored and released when needed through the Bay Delta and then pumped through 444 mile long California aqueduct down to Southern California. We now import 11% of water through the state water project compared to 95% back in 1990. So that's quite the difference. So the Colorado River Aqueduct was built by the Metropolitan Water District in the 1930s. It's uh, to deliver the imported water to the Southern California region. The aqueduct stretches 240 miles beginning at Lake Havasu on the um, Arizona-California border and ending in Riverside County. The Water Authority gets 69% of its water from the Colorado River. The remaining 20% of our water sources are local sources. It is expanding the use of recycled water, groundwater, desalinated water, potable reuse, and storage program is critical to lessening our dependence on imported water. Ultimately, we hope to increase our local supply to 40%. So, as I said before, Ramona buys its water from the San Diego Water Authority, which buys it from the Metropolitan Water Authority, then pumps it a thousand feet up a mountain, and then using a very big, powerful engine. During our fires, um, that generator and that pump station had actually burned, and so we had to um, store the waters. We we raised the waters in our tanks as much as we could and then we had to make sure that we um, stopped any water uses so that we could fight fire. So um, it's very important in that engine that it's a very big engine that pumps it up that thousand feet. So um, to give you an idea of how high a thousand feet is, the Eiffel, that is like taller than the Eiffel Tower. So. It's a, a long ways that it has to come up that mountain. Okay. In California, we can count on two things. It will get hot this summer, and there's another drought in our future. So we're currently in one of our worst droughts. But um, statewide, the region is recognized as the leader in water conservation. Right now, Northern California is not familiar with drought. They normally have a lot of water up north. And so now that they're in a drought, they're not used to this. And actually San Diego um, is doing a lot better than they are. So we've learned to conserve our water. And through that conservation, we've been able to store as much water as we can to weather through this drought. Okay. So, where is most of the water used in your home? 8% are leaks. 53% 53 is used outdoors. So your irrigation and watering outside, that's where a lot of your water is going to. 10% is used for bathing and showering. Another 10% for washing your clothes and doing laundry. Another 10% is used in flushing your toilets. 9% is used in running the faucet. So our water use in our homes, most of it is outdoor. When you wash your hands, take a shower, wash your clothes, and flush your toilet, where does that water go? So wastewater is 99.9% .9 water. The other 1% is um, solids. 
so that wastewater goes off to our treatment plant and then we treat it to a tertiary level so it goes through a, a very big process and it's treated so that we can reuse it and we send it out to customers like the golf courses so that they can water their um, their greens and then another is for an avocado grove they use it to grow um, avocados so we have three at the moment um, commercial uses for recycled water um, some homes have septic tanks to capture and then they, they that water can help them irrigate their lawns but most of it goes to the sewer system Sorry, page three. <laughs> All right. Recycled water or reclaimed water are the same thing. It is municipal wastewater. And it can be used for many beneficial uses, like outdoor irrigation, like I just said, to parks. We can also use it on golf courses. So those are a lot of the uses. Groundwater recharge. We actually will pump it back into the aquifer. You can um, support wetlands, rivers, and lakes. So um, to help grow the um, and um, how do you say it? Uh, in our wet in our wetlands, it helps um, rebuild the wet wetlands. So to help conserve more birds, um, plants, and everything. Okay. In industrial uses, we it can be used in paper plants. It can be used for cooling towers and boilers of power plants. Scotty, can you turn her guitar off so pump it? It can be used on construction sites, like for mixing concrete, for dust control. It can also be used for flushing toilets. It can also be used in breweries. It's currently being used there. It's also used for firefighting purposes. And it's also used in street sweepers. So recycled water can be used for many purposes. Anywhere that basically doesn't come in contact with your drinking water. So we have a lot of new technology out there that is helping us gather water. One is far, fog ha harvesting. You probably never thought about that, but our marine layers and our fog, they put up great big nets. And in the morning, the dew that collects on these nets, it drips down into troughs. And in a lot of third world countries, this is how they get their water. And so they collect it in basins, and then they use that as their drinking water. You can also use solar water generation. There's uh, water bottles out there that'll actually take the moisture out of the air and create drinking water for you. There's cloud seeding. When we don't have a lot of rain, they will try to seed the clouds um, using uh, chemicals to try to get the rain to come. We do desalination and of our seawater, and we're currently using that. It, in Carlsbad, we have the Carl uh, B. Lewis desalination plant, and that is producing um, a lot of our water and being mixed with city of San Diego and all of the other regions out here, Carlsbad, Escondido, even it's mixed into the San Diego County waters, water, so we are using our desalination water as well. Iceberg harvesting is another new technology that they're looking at in trying to get water because like I said, a lot of the fresh water is frozen. And rainwater collection. Rainwater is great to collect and try to use for your outdoor uses. California, is, like I said, isn't currently in a drought, but San Diego County is doing better than the rest of California. And that is due to mainly conservation. When we went into drought in um, 2011, we had to conserve 20%, and it was the 20 by 2020. Well, we did a lot better than that in a lot less years. So we've learned to conserve our water and collect it and use it in a more beneficial way.
Um, recycled water is another one. During that drought as well, we um, made a whole, a lot of the water districts was mandated to um, use recycled water. And so we, our plants were upgraded so that we could uh, create beneficial recycled water and we had to make a whole new distribution system for it. But that is helping us a, um, a lot. And Northern California is now starting to change and do the same thing. Desalination, as I told you, plus purification project. Now the purification project is a controversial project, but Oceanside is already currently, they just went online with their purification project. So when wastewater is treated to the recycled level, it is then put through an advanced treatment process using reverse osmosis, UV, um, hydrogen peroxide, and chlorination. They treat it to a level where the water is um, so pure that if you were to drink it, has no minerals in it, it would dehydrate you and possibly kill you. So um, they have to take that water once it's purified and blend it with a reservoir. So they send it off to the reservoir, it gets blended in the reservoir, and um, then it goes back into the treatment process. Um, and then it's treated again, it goes through a whole treatment process, and then it goes out for drinking water. So this is a new, um, new project coming online. City of San Diego is um, working on getting theirs up and running, hopefully by 2040. So that's another technology that's coming on board that's going to save our drinking water. All right. Um, I think I'm at my 10 minutes too. <laughs> but um, so the Ramona Municipal Water District, I thank you for inviting me out here, excuse me, <laughs> and uh, for having us. Um, Ramona Sustainable, I appreciate for inviting us. And if you have any questions or you have anything that you would like to call, please feel free to call me. I have a card at the table. I also have um, moisture meters that will help you conserve. It will tell you if you're overwatering your plants or underwatering them. We have water bottles and a lot of information on how to, um, how to tips that you can take for saving water. So if you have any questions, please feel free to step by and say hi to me. Um, the municipal water district, if you have any other questions about that incredible information that she just gave.